Biden's 2024 pitch highlights pragmatism over Trump's pugilism. President Joe Biden promised voters in 2020 that he knew how to get things done in Washington and could bring stability to the Capitol. It seemed like a message out of step with the more combative era brought on by Donald Trump. But Biden prevailed, and as he seeks a second term, he is again trying to frame the race as a referendum on competence and governance, pointing to the bipartisan debt limit and budget legislation he signed on Saturday as another exemplar of the success of his approach. The Democratic president reached a deal with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and other Republicans that largely preserved the domestic agenda that served as the foundation of what he hopes will become his legacy while avoiding the catastrophe of a U.S. government default and delaying another threat until after the 2024 election. His strategy, which favors pragmatism over Trumpian pugilism, will be put to the test more than ever during the upcoming campaign. His support rating, which is low even among Democrats, despite the successes he has achieved, is mostly due to concerns about his age as the oldest candidate ever. The 80 year old Biden's chief of staff, Jeff Zients, stated that the results speak for themselves. This level of support demonstrates that a bipartisan agreement was reached, which is crucial since it safeguards the president's interests. Now that we have a runway, we can go forward with the president's priorities. Biden's supporters claim that his approach mirrors his broader perspective on the presidency, shutting out the everyday chit-chat and concentrating on having a long-lasting influence. Ted Kaufman, a close buddy of Biden's and a former senator from Delaware, stated, this was quintessential Joe Biden. He truly comprehends institutions, how they work, how people interact with them, and what their limitations are. It's the enormous advantage he has derived from serving for eight years as vice president and 36 years in the Senate. The perceived benefit of longevity may also be Biden's biggest obstacle as he seeks four more years in office. According to insiders, Biden developed a plan soon after the Republicans seized control of the House in November and stuck to it throughout the negotiations despite doubts from his own party. In order to approach the negotiations with the strongest possible position, he pushed the Republicans to specify their budget priorities before publicly criticizing them for their proposed budget cutbacks. He respects the structures of American government. According to Mike Donilon, a senior advisor to the president, he has handled this with an eye toward making the administration and the Congress work in the way they were supposed to work. As the negotiations went on, Biden remained out of the public eye to allow Republican leaders to declare victory essential to sell the deal to their caucus, while reassuring Democrats that they would come to enjoy the arrangement as they knew more about it. The end result is a deal that, according to White House advisors, exceeds their expectations for what a budget deal with Republicans controlling the House would look like. Instead of the drastic cuts the GOP had in mind, it virtually freezes spending for the upcoming year and upholds Biden's infrastructure, environment, and Social Security and Medicare expenditure commitments. According to Biden's team, the outcome is also significantly better than the debt ceiling standoff in 2011, when Biden was a negotiator for then-President Barack Obama and House Republicans forced them to accept harsher budget cuts that they believe hindered the nation's recovery from the Great Recession. Biden's 2024 pitch highlights pragmatism over Trump's pugilism. By Zeke Miller 11 minutes ago. President Joe Biden addresses the nation on the budget deal that lifts the federal debt limit and averts a U.S. government default, from the Oval Office of the White House in Washington, June 2, 2023. Biden kept his eye on the long game when negotiating a deal with House Republicans to avert a U.S. government default. The bipartisan agreement is emblematic of his approach to dealmaking as he looks to prime himself for a re-election campaign. Jim Watson slash poll via AP 1 of 5. President Joe Biden addresses the nation on the budget deal that lifts the federal debt limit and averts a U.S. government default, from the Oval Office of the White House in Washington, June 2, 2023. Biden kept his eye on the long game when negotiating a deal with House Republicans to avert a U.S. government default. The bipartisan agreement is emblematic of his approach to dealmaking as he looks to prime himself for a re-election campaign. 
Jim Watson slash poll via AP Washington, AP, President Joe Biden promised voters in 2020 that he knew how to get things done in Washington and could bring stability to the Capitol. It seemed like a message out of step with the more combative era brought on by Donald Trump. But Biden prevailed, and as he seeks a second term, he is again trying to frame the race as a referendum on competence and governance, pointing to the bipartisan debt limit and budget legislation he signed on Saturday as another exemplar of the success of his approach. The agreement the Democratic president negotiated with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and other Republicans averted the catastrophe of a U.S. government default, and forestalled another threat until after the 2024 election, while largely protecting the domestic agenda that formed the backbone of what he hopes will form his legacy. His approach, favoring pragmatism over Trumpian pugilism, will be tested as never before in the coming campaign, with his approval rating even among Democrats low despite the results he has delivered, in large part because of concerns about his age as the oldest person to ever seek the presidency. Advertisement Joe Biden Biden signs debt ceiling bill that pulls U.S. back from brink of unprecedented default. Here's how to prepare to start paying back your student loans when the pandemic payment freeze ends. Biden celebrates a crisis averted in Oval Office address on bipartisan debt ceiling deal. Biden orders 20-year ban on oil, yes drilling to protect tribal sites outside New Mexico's Chaco. The results speak for themselves, said Jeff Zients, the 80-year-old Biden's chief of staff. This level of support shows that we got a bipartisan deal that, most importantly, protects the president's priorities. And now we have a runway to execute on the president's priorities. Biden's allies say his strategy reflects his broader view of the presidency, tuning out the daily chatter and focusing on making a prolonged impact. This was quintessential Joe Biden, said longtime Biden confidant and former Delaware Senator Ted Kaufman. He really understands the institutions, how they function, how they interact, and what their limitations are. It's the incredible advantage he has from having 36 years in the Senate, and 8 years as Vice President. Advertisement That perceived advantage, longevity, is also perhaps Biden's steepest hill as he seeks four more years. Advertisement Biden, aides said, devised a strategy shortly after Republicans took the House in November and stuck by it through the talks, despite second-guessing from members of his own party. He pressed the Republicans to define their budget priorities, then hammered them in public for unpopular proposed cuts once they did, to enter the negotiations with the strongest hand possible. He believes in the institutions of American governance. He's approached this with an eye toward making the presidency and the Congress work in the way they were designed to work, said Mike Donilon, a senior advisor to the president. Advertisement As the talks progressed, Biden stepped out of the limelight to allow Republican leaders to claim a win, necessary to sell it to their caucus, and quietly reassured Democrats that they would grow to like the deal the more they learned about it. The result is an agreement that White House aides say exceeded their projections of what a budget agreement would look like with Republicans in charge of the House. It essentially freezes spending for the next year, rather than the steep cuts proposed by the GOP, and protects Biden's infrastructure and climate laws and spending on Social Security and Medicare. From the view of Biden's team, it's also far better than the result than the debt limit showdown of 2011, when Biden was a negotiator for then-President Barack Obama and House Republicans forced them to accept stiffer budget cuts that they believe hampered the country's recovery from the Great Recession. Advertisement Biden still has come under fire from some in his own party for agreeing to tougher work requirements for some federal food assistance recipients and speeding up environmental reviews for infrastructure projects. But the White House sees an upside, the permitting changes will speed up implementation of Biden's infrastructure and climate laws, and the Biden aides highlight that Congressional Budget Office projections show that carve-outs from work requirements for veterans, people who are homeless and those leaving foster care will actually expand the number of people eligible for federal food assistance. While the rest of us are sweating the micro-news cycles and who's up and who's down on Twitter, 
the president is playing the long game, said Obama spokesman and Democratic strategist Eric Schultz. He ran for the presidency pledging to restore functionality to Washington after his predecessor, and it's hard to argue with his record of doing so, Schultz added. He's proven he can rack up significant Democratic wins while also working in good faith with the other side. Biden drew a red line in negotiations that the debt limit had to be extended until after the 2024 presidential election, worried both on substance and style about the potential for another showdown in an even more heated political environment. His sentiment may be right, but voters are increasingly concerned about his age and its toll, a message relentlessly reinforced by prospective Republican challengers and the conservative media ecosystem. Biden has chalked up a series of impressive accomplishments on a bipartisan basis and demonstrated that he can do that without being the center of attention, said presidential historian Lindsay Shervinsky. That's what the American voters said they wanted then. But 2024 will have an entirely different context. Biden, she said, would need to argue that the stability he's brought about is at risk by his opponents and hope voters' memories are long enough. White House aides say the deal gives them running room through the 2024 election to focus on making people feel the impacts of the legislation Biden signed into law, as well as begin to lay out their priorities for what he would do with another term and more Democrats in Congress. Biden himself on Friday underlined the contrast with the combative character of the Republicans' race in his adult-in-the-room posture. He called on both parties to join forces as Americans to stop shouting, lower the temperature, even as he highlighted GOP opposition to his efforts to raise taxes on wealthy individuals and corporations and cut tax breaks. Republicans defended every single one of these special interest loopholes, Biden said, testing out a campaign line he is expected to hone in on in the coming months. Every single one. But I'm going to be coming back. And with your help, I'm going to win. Despite Biden's protestations, and his goal of unburdening himself and future office holders from the potential of future hostage-taking, Biden still proved to be incapable of breaking the cycle of the debt ceiling being used as leverage in negotiations. Princeton University historian Julian Zelizer said it made the agreement a mixed bag, staving off crisis now, but one that could come back to haunt him and subsequent presidents. Republicans just did it again. It happened when he was vice president it happened when he was president, and it'll happen again, he said. A lot of Republicans always wanted the tactic more than the outcome, he didn't stop that. Zelizer acknowledged that Biden may not have had any other options, a proposal to use the 14th Amendment to pay obligations without Congress say so was untested and had its own pitfalls. When you have a threat like that, you have to negotiate, he ignored but for Biden's team, the results are what matter. He had his eyes on the prize, which was, how is this deal going to get done? And how does my doing that advance this deal? Donalon said. We need to have our politics come together in moments where it has to do it. And so I think that actually will be a reassuring moment for the